this video is going to introduce some specific cytokines. Cytokines are small proteins released by many cells in the body, and these proteins typically get released and travel uh, to other cells and get those cells to do something. So cytokines are key cellular communication molecules released by one cell, target another cell, and get that cell to do something. There are over a hundred different cytokines. We're not going to learn all of them, but we will learn a number of them. You'll have to know their names, their, uh, where they're released from, what they go to, and the effects on their targets. So we're going to learn about three different cytokines, wait, four different cytokines in this video. And we're going to start with cytokines being released out of macrophages. Uh, these cytokines might be released by other cells, but we'll start with macrophages. And again, this goes to communication. One cell wants to tell another cell what to do. So here's a macrophage. Let's back up here. Um, there's a macrophage um, in a tissue, in the connective tissue of some part of the body, possibly the skin. I've drawn an epithelial barrier in blue. I've drawn a blood vessel in red. And there's the macrophage. And it's got its toe-like receptors on its surface and the plasma membrane. So there's no infection, so those TLRs have not engaged any ligands. Well, there's a breach in the uh, epithelial layer, and now there's a pathogen. And that pathogen is going to be detected, hopefully, by TLRs on the surface of macrophages. If they are, then the TLRs will signal into the cell, into the nucleus, and the cell will produce cytokines and release them. Uh, into the uh, interstitial fluid, and um, those cytokines are going to have effects, and we're going to learn about them now. So there are two cytokines we'll start off with, TNF-alpha and IL-1 beta. So TNF-alpha stands for tumor necrosis factor. I know that's a really strange name, and scientists name things when they discover them, and then it turns out, well, it does something else, too, plays a really important role in inflammation, but the name sticks. So even though you see the word tumor and necrosis in this uh, cytokine name, uh, it a, plays a really important role in normal inflammation. So that's TNF-alpha. IL-1 uh, beta, IL stands for interleukins. So many cytokines have this term IL, interleukin. Um, it was sort of an older, old-fashioned name for cytokines there released by leukocytes, and they signal from one cell to another, so interleukins. This is IL-1 beta. So IL-1 beta and TNF-alpha can be released from macrophages after macrophages recognize an infection using their TLRs. And what are the targets and effects of TNF-alpha and IL-1 beta? So they overlap a lot, and I want you to know their targets and their effects. So one target are the blood vessels. So if you remember, blood vessels are lined with endothelial cells, and endothelial cells typically have receptors for TNF-alpha and IL-1 beta. So these are receptors that bind the cytokines. So TNF-alpha and IL-1 beta will diffuse to the blood vessel, bind the TNF-alpha receptor, bind the IL-1 beta receptor, and it's going to get these endothelial cells to do something. It's going to get the blood vessels to change. What's the change? First of all, increased vascular permeability. When we learned about inflammation, we talked about uh, edema or swelling or tumor, right? How did that happen? Well, macrophages and other cells release cytokines, such as TNF-alpha and IL-1-beta. Those change blood vessels, and I'm showing you now how. Those uh, cytokines bind receptors on endothelial cells, and they change the tight junctions between endothelial cells so they're not so tight anymore. And now more fluid and proteins, complement antibodies, can come into the site where the infection has been detected. So cytokines can increase vascular permeability. What else can they do? They can trigger vasodilation, so increase the diameter of the blood vessel, uh, more blood comes to the site, which means more proteins and cells come to the site. So the whole thing about inflammation, or tumor, rubor, calor, dolor, triggered by cytokines, such as TNF-alpha and IL-1-beta. Um, what else can happen here? Those endothelial cells will change. They will turn on adhesion proteins. So when cytokines such as TNF-alpha and IL-1-beta 
bind to these receptors on endothelial cells, the endothelial cells change. Another change is these cells turn on proteins that are going to help blood cells stop at this site. So if you recall, uh, neutrophils, very abundant white blood cell. And you're going to find it in the bloodstream, primarily, when there's no infection. But when there is an infection detected, we talked about neutrophils stopping at the site of infection, where there's inflammation, and I see inflammation going on here, and somehow they know to stop and get off and enter the tissue. And now I'm telling you how. These cytokines, TNF-alpha and IL-1 beta, trigger endothelial cells to turn on adhesion proteins so that now neutrophils that don't swim by this site, they adhere to the site. They're going to stop. Um, other blood cells that um, are going to adhere are monocytes. So monocytes, another uh, cell in the bloodstream, uh, they're not going to pass by the site. They're going to uh, adhere to these proteins that are present on the surface of endothelial cells. So uh, white blood cell recruitment into inflamed uh, tissues is triggered by these cytokines, IL-1 beta and TNF-alpha. Uh, there's another cytokine. Um, called CXCL8. So it, anytime you see a CXCL in front of a cytokine name, it's a special type of cytokine typically called a chemokine or a chemoattractant cytokine. And you possibly learned about chemoattractants in microbiology. Um, there are molecules that sort of leave a trail of breadcrumbs where that cells follow. They will go uh, to areas from, from areas of low concentration to areas of high concentration. So CXCL8 is a cytokine, a special type called a chemokine, and it is released, and I drew a couple molecules here, from that macrophage. So this is going to lead a trail of breadcrumbs that are going to help neutrophils and monocytes know where the infection is. So sure, they stopped at this blood vessel wall, but we want them to follow the trail to where the infection is. And so neutrophils and monocytes have CXCL8 receptors, and they will move toward areas of high concentration of CXCL8. So that's a chemoattractant. Um, so now we're recruiting neutrophils and monocytes into the site of infection. Neutrophils are going to swarm and eat as much as they can. Monocytes will come in and differentiate into either dendritic cells or more macrophages. So that's a third cytokine, its function. Um, the fourth cytokine we'll talk about is IL-6, interleukin-6. So when that is released by macrophages, it acts locally on the fat and muscle cells in the tissue to increase um, their metabolism and increase uh, heat. And again, we talk about heat being good for um, the immune system. Immune cells like to work at a higher temperature. Pathogens that don't typically like uh, the higher temperature, viruses and bacteria, don't reproduce as well under high temperature. So IL-6 works locally to increase the temperature of the inflamed site. So again, going back to the inflammation characteristics, two more, rubor, dolor, calor, um, these are all induced by these types of cytokines. This video has focused on the local effect of cytokines. We'll see in a later video that there are systemic effect of cytokines. So these um, cytokines are acting locally on the tissue. If these cytokines get into the bloodstream, and travel throughout the body, they can have effects on distant locations. And that's when we talk about systemic effects. We're talking about having an effect on distant locations. But this is just the localized effect of cytokines released by macrophages.